Let's welcome Professor Carl June. So now I'd like to tell you the story behind that. Um, CAR T cells are, it's an abbreviation for uh, the word chimeric antigen receptor. Uh, and T cells are in your blood. They're a, the form of cells that give us immune responses against viruses. And, um, you know, the word chimeric, you know, comes from the Greek word of a mythical monster that was made out of the head of a lion, the body of a goat, and on the tail of a serpent or a snake. And chimeric T cells, CAR T cells, are a chimera between a B cell and a T cell. So you have B cells in your body, they make antibodies to protect you from uh, bacteria, and T cells are what protect you from viruses. And a CAR T cell is a chimera of a B cell and a T cell. So um, my background is pretty unusual to go into cancer research. Um, I played football in high school and I thought I was going to go to Stanford um, University. Um, and um, in 1971, I was admitted to Stanford, but that, that was in the middle of the Vietnam War. And so I ended up going into the Navy and went to the Naval Academy and uh, never did then go to Stanford. Uh, then I went to medical school in 1975. Uh, and then I, I was in the Navy for 20 years working on HIV, even though I'd been trained as a leukemia doctor. So I worked on HIV, which turned out to be very useful for uh, 20 years in the Navy. And then I moved to the University of Pennsylvania uh, in uh, Philadelphia in 1999, and I'm still there. And then that's where our CAR T cells uh, began to work. Um, so that's my background. It was a lot of unusual things. That's not how you usually go into research. And, and um, that's brought this idea to me from a famous baseball player named Yogi Berra, who said, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. And normally when you come to a fork in the road, you go one way or the other, but he was just said, go. And um, so my story is, and my me lesson and message to you is that unusual changes in your career can actually be very good opportunities. You just have to take advantage of them. And um, so I never thought I was going to go into medical research. It was only because of um, the Vietnam War that I ended up getting to medical school. So, uh, you know, these are some of the forks in the road that I had. Um, you know, I started off uh, as a bone marrow transplant specialist because the Navy, where I was in the Navy, wanted people to be able to take um, uh, uh, treatments of radiation accidents, such as Fukushima and uh, Chernobyl. And because the Navy had a, a lot of uh, submarines that have nuclear reactors in there, there's a risk that uh, people would need a bone marrow transplant to treat that. So I, that's how I started um, uh, and how I got into treating leukemia. And then, um, but when I was in the Navy, I was not allowed to do research in leukemia. You could only do research in infectious diseases. So, so I worked for 20 years on HIV and AIDS and, and also malaria. And that turned out to be a really lucky break for me because knowing how to uh, uh, use the HIV virus turned out, thank you, that was a big part of how we make CAR T cells. As, as you saw in the movie, we get the, the way we genetically modify the T cells is to um, use the HIV virus to do that. And so because I was uh, in the Navy, I learned a lot about the HIV virus, and then that allowed me to apply that to cancer when I went to the University of Pennsylvania. Um, so, um, and then I learned something very interesting about cancer. I mean, my first wife got cancer when she was 41 and passed away, and I got remarried. And I found out how hard it was to do uh, research and do new kinds of trials uh, through my experience with my wife. So I learned a lot from all those forks on the road. Um, and uh, so CAR T cells, the process is shown on this cartoon on the right side. Uh, it begins with step one, which is blood is taken out, and then they're in a laboratory, they're engineered with the HIV virus to become a CAR T cell. So that's genetic cellular engineering. Then the cells are frozen and then taken back to the patient. 
that whole thing is what we call the vein to vein time. And it's about two weeks uh, uh, you know, from step one where the cells are starting to be manufactured to when they're finally uh, infused in the patients. Now those CAR T cells can last in the body for years. So Emily Whitehead was infused in 2012 and she still has CAR T cells today. So it's the first living drug um, where you give it one time and it can last the rest of your lifetime in, in principle. The cells have a half-life of more than 17 uh, years in the body. And we think the reason that people have very durable responses and many are cured is because the cells stay on patrol in your body and fight the cancer. So um, Emily was six years old when we treated her, and now you can see she's 14 years old, uh, which she looks like on the right. She has a dog named Lucy in the center with her, her parents and um, is a very healthy child, but she has CAR T cells in her still and, um, um, and uh, is, is leading a normal life. So CAR T cells are the first uh, cell and gene therapy. Um, you know, Emily was treated in 2012, and then um, at that time, Novartis said uh, and licensed the, the CAR T cells that we made in my lab, and then uh, Novartis began international trials. Um, and um, in, in the trial that they did, um, there, there was a 90% complete remission rate. So that replicated what we had found in Emily. It was very effective for um, end-stage and very advanced uh, leukemia. And so it became the first uh, cell and gene therapy to become uh, approved by the US FDA in August of 2017. Um, it looks like next year the Chinese FDA will approve first CAR T cells uh, in China. Uh, there's a company called Nanjing Legend, which makes CAR T cells now for a different kind of bone marrow cancer called myeloma. And those cells now have been, and, and Nanjing Legend is working with uh, J Johnson & Johnson, a pharmaceutical company in the United States, uh, to make it approved both in the U.S. and in China. So I think that's going to be a very exciting event. On the right is a package insert uh, for the CAR T cells. They're called uh, Kim Raya. So um, the side effect from CAR T cells is called cytokine release syndrome, or CRS. Um, and it almost killed Emily. It's a very high fever. On the right side is a plot of her temperature and Three days after we treated her, she had a fever of over 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And she had no infections. It was all due to the cancer cells being killed by the CAR T cells. And she had, you know, pounds of cancer. So it was a very violent reaction. And um, we found that this only happens in patients who are getting better. So if the CAR T cells don't work, then there's no fever, nothing happens. And unfortunately, those patients uh, end up dying of their leukemia. But if they have CRS, it means the CAR T cells are attacking the tumor and then are actually working. So uh, tocilizumab is a drug that we use to treat her that saved her life. It blocks cytokine release syndrome. And it was a very lucky thing that happened with the treatment of um, Emily with tocilizumab. So this is how this happened. Um, my daughter is shown on the left here, when she was six years old, she got JRA. JRA is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And the drug that you treat JRA with is tocilizumab. And it was invented by uh, Professor Tata Kishimoto in Japan. Um, and I was president of the Immunology Society in 2010, and I invited him to come from Japan to the United States, and we gave him an award for inventing uh, tocilizumab. And so I knew what it could do. It blocked a cytokine that was very high levels in Emily. It was called interleukin-6. They were a thousandfold above normal levels. And we gave it to her and it immediately made her fever go away and the cytokine release syndrome stopped. So it was very successful. And now it's become uh, co-labeled by the United States FDA so when CAR T cells are given, you give tocilizumab. So it's the first time there's ever been two drugs approved for that kind of reason. So um, um, it was just luck that we knew about that called uh, serendipity. 
Okay, so um, what happens when things go right? Sometimes they work out the way you think. Sometimes they go badly and the experiments don't work. And sometimes strange things happen that you want to find out why. And we had that happen in the 10th patient we treated. Um, and this is what we've learned. So on the graph on the right, you can see uh, there's a number of curves there and those are CAR T cells in the blood in patients. So we can measure them and they go up and down and Emily's went up and hit a peak uh, seven days after we treated her and then they went down and to a low level and she still has those nine years later. And um, so um, what you can see in the red line though is that patient had a delayed increase. His peak happened 50 days later. And we studied that and found out that all his CAR T cells came from one uh, descendant. So they're all children of one CAR cell and they were quite amazing. In other words, they were very potent. And we found that in that one patient that only, we only needed one CAR T cell to treat him. And so that, that was uh, a good a lesson by studying this outlier that we learn now how to make much better CAR T cells and don't have to make enough. Um, so um, uh, many other lessons now like that that we've learned. Um, so um, CAR T cells are now worldwide. When we treated Emily, there were only three trials in the whole world, um, and, and they were all in the United States. Right now, you can look into a website called clinicaltrials.gov, and you can find out geographically where CAR T cell uh, trials are. And what you would find is that um, now there's more than 400 trials around the world, and most of them are in China or in the United States. There's very few in Europe, and there's none in the Southern Hemisphere, except a few in Australia. So the most active area of research now is here in China, and the second most active is in the United States. Um, so um, I expect that we're gonna see CAR T cells approved for all kinds of cancer in the coming uh, years. Um, but there are a number of social challenges that we must address. So one is that, um, CAR T cells are expensive right now because they're made one by one for each patient. It's a custom treatment. And there's a lot of work now here in China to make it done using robotics and to make them automatically instead of using human labor. Um, and another approach is to make what we call third party CAR cells. Instead of starting from the patient's own blood, maybe we could find a universal donor like we could do with red blood cells. And then um, that would make it much cheaper if we could manufacture them, um, uh, you know, for many patients at one time. Um, and another problem is, is of the cost is um, the cancer in general is very expensive. It used to be people died so fast that it didn't cost much to society. But now there's many cancer drugs that people live longer, but they're not cured. And so that's uh, ongoing expense year after year. And so what we need is to have cancer drugs that um, uh, are curing patients and then that will become cheaper. In the United States, the average cost of a new, uh, of new drugs approved in 2017 was $150,000 a year. So we can't continue to do that. We need to find ways to make patients cured and then uh, just with one time, like a vaccine. So in uh, 2015, Vice President B uh, Biden visited my laboratory and he started a program called the Moonshot program. The Moonshot is a way to make different laboratories work together. And I'm beginning to work now with uh, some laboratories in Shanghai. And that's, uh, we get collaboration uh, and more rapid progress that way. And uh, Vice President Biden's son died of a brain cancer. And that's why he uh, got so interested in this. So I can show you here uh, that Emily is growing up. Here's pictures of her, you know, two years and then three years after treatment. And then now uh, she's actually now uh, six years out and doing fine. And she just had a fortune cookie. And her fortune cookie says, a purpose is the eternal condition for success. So Emily's given us a good message. So finally, Emily's, you know, so famous, she met President Obama here in 2015, and in this case, um, they started a, a new kind of science uh, based on her results in the United States, our National Cancer Institute, 
and she was uh, with him on a Monday at the White House. And um, at the end, she, um, President Obama asked if there was anything she could do, he could do for her, and, and he said, yes. Uh, she said, I'm supposed to be in school today because it was a Monday. And so President Obama wrote on White House stationery, please excuse Emily from school. She was with me. So, um, and another one of my patients here, this is Nicholas Wilkins. He um, met the Pope in, in the Vatican a few years ago with me. And um, Nick is an Asian American and got uh, leukemia and then was treated. And uh, he's, now, he's now actually in uh, college. So um, we had a reunion in 2017 of the children that we had treated. Uh, this was in celebration of getting FDA approval for the uh, CAR T cells. And all these kids uh, are cured. So um, I'm very lucky. Um, you know, this is, um, you know, there could be no better reward than to have parents and children say, thank you for saving my life. And so I've been very blessed. Thank you.